This is First Web Designer Success Stories, a podcast where you will hear the most successful web design professionals share their stories about how they made it all the way to the top. Hello everyone and welcome to First Web Designer Success Stories. Our today's success story is Lauren Gray and Lauren's story really is about um, the transition, how she transitioned from web design freelancer and became web design professional. And in nowadays, Lauren successfully runs her own web design business called Once Coupled. And in short, her story really will be about how now she can charge more than 10 times the amount she used to charge uh, as a freelancer, as well as how now she can be picky and say no to a certain set of clients she just doesn't want to work with, and pick really the ones that she really would enjoy working with, as well as how her time is really the thing that she values the most. So welcome on show, Lauren Gray. How are you, Lauren? Great, thank you so much for having me. So I believe uh, now you are really excited to share uh, your story, how, how your web design business uh, got transformed after you attended um, our friends Brent Weaver's 10K Bootcamp. Yeah, absolutely. It made all the difference in my business. So, um, you know, I'm happy to share my experience with everyone else. Amazing. I can't wait uh, to hear more. Maybe the best way to start would be to share with our listeners um, what was the situation, the stage you were in before you uh, was able, you were able to attend 10K Bootcamp? What, in what place were you before? Yeah, before I did the bootcamp, I was, um, you know, charging as little as, you know, usually about $300 for a web project. I was not really targeting any specific market. I didn't have a lot of momentum in my business. Um, and you know now that's just completely different for me. So, um, do you think the, the the reason that now you can charge, like I said, at least the ten times the amount you used to charge, uh, because, like you said, you charge three hundred dollars now. I remember you were telling me that you don't even usually talk to people unless they have a budget of um, three thousand dollars. Do you think it is because now? you are uh, perceived as someone more valuable because of your spe- specific specific niche and you know that it's not just anyone who can do it now yeah absolutely um you know going through this boot camp and and working on my business and thinking about how i'm going to you know, provide the most value to my clients mm-hmm. um i decided that the best market for me was what i was kind of already in and that's food bloggers and so um because I know so much more about what they need and what they want and I'm more knowledgeable in those areas as well, I'm able to really have a better impact on not just their you know online site but yeah. the business that they have behind it. And so that's what um, makes you know my services more valuable to my clients, not just uh, the way I perceive you know my services or how much I charge for them, but my clients recognize that it's worth that different amount because, I'm offering them so much more than just web design. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And I think actually what is worth mentioning to our listeners is that you um, actually, you used to already serve food bloggers, you know, um, and mm-hmm. work with food bloggers before the 10K bootcamp, um, as well as all sort of different clients. So the opportunity was there, but I believe Brent, um, you know, taught you how to pick that one opportunity and go with it. It wasn't like, you know, you discovered something new. It was there, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's something that was that's already there. I just wasn't thinking about it um, in that kind of way. It wasn't really something that was on my mind. So when I went through this class and I, I'd already been working with, with food bloggers and that kind of market is, you know, what I'm passionate about and the kind of um, clients that I enjoy working with and the projects I enjoy working on. And so we went through this session where we were talking about choosing a target market and how it doesn't really restrict your options as much as you think it does. It actually expands them. And so I was talking with Brent and my small group and the people that were in there and I yeah. realized, you know, I'm already working with this kind of niche. I should make that what my business is and be able to provide, you know, more value 
learn more things that are going to benefit those clients rather than just learning a little bit of everything and never really being able to please anyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it makes sense. But what, uh, even though it makes sense, a lot of people um, have these kind of fears, you know, and probably you already know it's a myth yeah. that um, once you pick a niche, you know, you cut off potentially so many clients, you know, and you're not going to have as much workload. Is there anything you can say to these guys who have uh, still the fear of picking a niche? I definitely, that was something that was hard for me uh, to sort of wrap my mind around originally was I'm being told that picking a niche is really going to expand what I can write about and who I can really speak to and I'm like no way you know I'm gonna have fewer people that are even gonna look at me and see that I can do what they need but those people that do see my site those food bloggers that come to my site like I'm speaking directly to them and I'm telling them what their problems are and that I specifically have experience in fixing their problems um, so it gives me more to talk about. It really, it's it's it does expand your market to have that to be able to speak to these people and really connect with them in a way that you can't do when you're trying to please everyone. Yeah, talking about not having enough workload and uh, not being able to have enough clients. You know, you people would think they would have too much time on their hands. You know, not being able to run a business. But actually, what you mentioned to me before. You are so busy now and you have so many clients that you had to prioritize your own time and and uh, understand how valuable it is. And obviously, mm -hmm. that's something, again, in 10K Bootcamp, Brent taught you about time management. Can, can we go yeah. a little deeper in that? I think that's one of my favorite lessons right now because I'm working on it so much. And it's that I'm thinking about how much my time is worth um, to my business now and in the future. So I've been delegating tasks that don't have to be done by me. Um, I've been turning down projects that maybe they're going to give me a little bit of money now, but they're not an ideal client. They're not really where I see myself in the future. And so I'm seeing that it's worth my time to turn down that money and instead focus that same mm -hmm. amount of time on marketing or bringing in a client that is more along where I see my business going in the future. So I know that by you know, giving up ten dollars now, I'm going to make a hundred dollars later. Um, or you know, that's that kind of um, thought process goes through my head. Is mm. what is my what is my time really worth? No, no, it's actually uh, yeah, it's more of a business kind of mindset. You know, to grow and scale, scale your business. And I think talking about business mindset, it's worth mentioning to our listeners again that. You, you are not really uh, someone who designs for countless hours or codes for countless hours. You are someone yeah. that I would call more of an entrepreneur who's really, who really cares about growing and scaling your business. So a lot of times you actually bring in people from outside based on your um, credibility you you um, you created with your clients. Can you maybe go a little bit into that? How how is that? How the actual process happens with web development? Yeah. So. Um... I, I've been working with delegating some of my, my design work or my coding work um, that is less about the goals. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong way. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm getting kind of backwards here. But basically, when I'm, when I'm working with someone else, um, a, another developer or designer or something, mm. I'm working with them and they're kind of that extra person. So I work one on one with my clients and I find out what their goals are going to be. And, you know, I really do that valuable work of connecting with them and finding out what they need. And then it's less valuable of me to go in and do that for them. So I, I've been delegating those tasks and having other contractors or, um, you know, people go in and, and do the design, do the coding. It's something that I've always liked to do, but as I'm focusing on growing my business and trying to um, expand, like you're saying, I can't do everything. And so by working with other people who can really specialize in those areas and put that time in, I can continue to grow my business and focus on my clients a lot more than I would have been able to if I was doing the coding for them as well. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I, it actually reminds me of, uh, say, of, of, of a film director who directs a film, but they have <laughs> an audio guy, video guy, you know, producer, so the film director can actually make sure that the direction where you're going is 
where the film is supposed to go. The same with you. You just got yeah. to make sure you have enough time now to make sure that the project is going to that direction where the client wants. Yeah, make absolutely. Sure. It's all about their goals. Oh, good you, good you mentioned that because that's uh, that's where I wanted to jump in next. Where you mentioned to me again that you don't design just websites, you know. You look at these web pr um, projects are something more than just a pretty website you were mentioning uh, pain points uh, goals what is the that that thing that the client wants to get from that website which is not always just a pretty look maybe we can expand on that a little bit mm -hmm. so it was uh, it was moving out of that commodity mindset with my clients that I'm just providing a website to them and now we're focusing on their goals, what they, um, their client, not their clients, but you know, their visitors, because these are food bloggers, so they have regular readers that are coming in, what we can provide to those readers. So we're looking at their business and what functionality their site needs for their business, more than just design, or they kind of tell me what function they need. Now they're telling me what outcome they want or what kind of return they want, and I tell them, well, this is what we should do to focus on that. These are the changes we should make. And so moving out of that commodity mindset, I now connect with my clients on such a um, deeper level. We have more lasting relationships. We do a lot more work together, and I understand them and their own business goals and their sites and their readers a lot better because we have these in-depth conversations about what they want to get out of the next month or the next year with their site. Hmm. Um, actually, when I t when I've talked with other say uh, web developers about this kind of stuff, you know, when you know you should think of a website, uh, of something more than just a website and pretty look, they are not um, accepting it very easily. You know, maybe they are too uh, too passionate coders or too passionate designers, and so I know myself that it's not always easy to convince them to look at it as a vehicle to solve your client pain points. Now, my question is when. Uh, Brent taught you this kind of mindset um, in his 10k bootcamp. Did you feel any resistance from yourself or maybe you saw it from other peers? How easy is it for people um, to accept this kind of mindset? Or maybe Brent was just very good to sort of hypnotize you with this it, kind of new mindset. <laughs> it's definitely still a struggle um, to remind myself that I don't need to be coding all the time or you know doing something like that kind of, um, you know, less goal oriented work with my clients because I do like to do that. And I know that it's something that the other people in my small group have been struggling with because I still meet with some of them regularly. Um, and just this week, one of the women from my group was talking about how she's still struggling specifically mm. with this task of moving out of the commodity uh, mindset and into, you know, a more value based business plan for herself. And so it's definitely something that's a struggle. But once you start taking it in and really um, embodying it, it, it's it's a lot easier because it becomes a lot more fun. You have, you know, much better conversation with your clients. You're making such a big impact on their business. And that really is what makes a big impact on your business. When you have happy clients and they're really seeing that return, they tell other people, you can brag about that to other people. Um, it's really just a better experience for everyone around so getting there is definitely hard, but once you start inching into it and you really start thinking about the value that you're providing to your clients, then it becomes a lot easier to see how you can continue to provide more value um, and, and up that standard every time you work with a new person. Yeah, sounds sounds great and sounds uh, sounds promising. If only everyone would, you know, think of. Uh, I think was it you who said that or someone else? Basically, it, it's not. Um, it's not what you create, what you design, or what you code. Is it's about how it solves that pain point. You know, ask how it will help, how it will solve. And one of the ways to do it, I think, again, you, I think, mentioned it to me, or I saw a video of you talking about something uh, called the uh, buyer buyer personas, I think, which they taught you in 10K bootcamp. Can you maybe mention some examples or uh, just talk about about it a little bit? Mm -hmm. So that's something that, you know, understanding my own clients and who my ideal client would be really helped me relate and connect with new clients. And so it's something that I've been working into some of my new clients and even a few of my recurring clients is going in and thinking about who their audience is and how we can solve their audience, their audience's pain points. Um, so we think about it just like, I ask them, you know, what kind of food blogger are you? 
because food blogger with Pinterest and social media and the ease of putting a book out there now has food blogging has just you know expanded so much yeah. in the past few years and so I tell my clients now you need to be more than just a food blogger you know what kind of food blogger are you who is your audience what kind of content are you putting out there to really connect with them and so when I work with clients and we come up with these buyer personas it's content strategy for who they're going to be working with um, um, you know some of them are already already you know very well established food blogs and they have an audience that's built up and kind of expect something from them and it's easier for them to know what what kind of content to put out there what their readers are gonna like who their readers are but then you have some very new food bloggers and coming up with that buyer persona really is what makes all the difference for their their content and how their website is going to be put together and what kind of functionality it's going to have. It's because they understand who their audience is going to be, who they're going to be attracting through their content and everything. And it just makes it so much easier for them to make these decisions and to continue to put out content and put together, um, you know, answers for these people's problems, these yeah. visitors that they want to have. Yeah, no, um, it's actually something um, I see in a lot of, not, not even web-related businesses do. It's maybe sometimes called ideal uh, ideal customer or ideal mm -hmm. client, where sometimes they even print a, a sort of, uh, you know, cartoon type of picture of the typical client, you know, and then sort of the, the average age or the interests. And it's so much easier to accommodate your business when, uh, you know, you kind of have in your mind who you're talking to, who is this person. So it makes yeah, absolute absolutely. sense. And actually, when you were talking about this, I kind of in my head imagined you going up to their office or meeting wherever, you know, face to face. And then what I realized is, is that a lot of uh, web developers and web design professionals don't necessarily live in, in an exact location where the client lives. And they might not be able to uh, meet uh, face to face always. Mm -hmm. And then I remembered what you told me that a lot of your communication now because of 10k bootcamp uh, you've been inspired by 10k bootcamp is video based <laughs> like uh, yes. Skype calls can you maybe change uh, tell me a little bit how you changed your business and communication with your clients yeah definitely um, before before 10k bootcamp I did not get on video um, on my computer at all it just wasn't something I was accustomed to so I just didn't it, it didn't even really occur to me to try it so all of my email was or all of my communication was done through email mm. and then 10k bootcamp is video meetings that you have with your small group and your mentor and so after doing that for a few weeks it just became very natural for me to be on camera to do meetings through the internet it was just very easy something I you know became used to so I decided that I would try that with my clients um, some of my recurring clients, I'd already talked with them quite frequently over email and I told them that I wanted to start setting up monthly meetings and now we do um, Skype meetings or Google Plus meetings and we meet face to face. I know who all of the, them are now, they know who I am. I feel like it really builds some trust there to be able to see each other and it makes it a lot easier to communicate rather than having to use email. We can really talk to each other and um, there's none of that communication mishaps or anything like that because we're just talking, you know, like there's a regular meeting here and, you know, we're across the country from each other. Hmm. And I don't know if you can agree with this, but perhaps it also uh, has built um, um, confidence as well, you know, constantly communicating face to face, even if it's mm -hmm. via video, because a, a lot of people, like you said, for years have done communication via email, you know. I uh, definitely, I think it's, it definitely builds confidence. It builds trust in each other. Um, it you know reduces those misunderstandings. You really feel like you com can communicate with someone face to face, yeah. kind of what their goals are, what you're going to do, and and you know I I just you know feel like you trust each other better to be able to agree on those things face to face. Well, yeah, that's uh, what a human has been made for to have uh, you know <laughs> real human interaction. Talking about them. Um, you know, communication, discussions, interactions between you and your clients. Maybe we can now go to the other part of the 10K Bootcamp, which is how 
throughout your 10k bootcamp program how were you able to communicate inside the bootcamp was it just with um, emails um, were you able to connect with mentors maybe even your fellow peers what was that experience Mm -hmm. So um, I've kind of been mentioning it before or, you know, earlier in this this conversation, but you have a small group and you have a mentor that leads those small groups. So every week you meet with those 10 or so people and you really get to know each other, your each other's businesses and goals and the ideal clients of those people. And you do a video meeting every week with them. Um, so you really get to know each other and, and have fun. I still meet with my group. We have a Facebook group now and we do a Google Hangout every every week during the same oh, time nice. that our, our boot camp was at because we all knew we were available at that yeah. time. Uh, so it's very easy afterwards. You're all very familiar. You have the discussions about your lessons. Um, there's video lessons that are done each week and then during that small group you come together and you talk about the lessons and you review them and ask questions and really uh, think about how you're going to bring them into your business. Mm. The thing is, um, obviously a lot of uh, these kind of, um, you know, courses and, and, and programs are just based, um, you know, on forums and, well, just like you mentioned, sometimes even video or Skype call communications, discussions, but that's where it pretty much ends. You You don't get pushed because I think there's even maybe 20% of students who enroll to courses, they are committed in, enough themselves to, to um, go through the lessons and, and push themselves. So maybe we can wrap this whole thing up where you can maybe share your experience, how you were uh, being kept accountable for your journey, who kept you accountable, what was the accountability uh, system like throughout the 10k bootcamp? Absolutely, I think that made a big difference in me choosing to do this program was that instead of just being video lessons every week that you would go in and watch, there's that meeting every week and you meet with that small group and every week um, each person in your group will set up an accountability for the next week and you'll set up some kind of smart goal that's done with your mentor so they're making sure that you're setting something that's going to be smart for you and your business and when I say smart goal I mean you know specific, measurable, attainable, etc. Um, but smart also that it's good for your business. It's going to be something that's going to take you to the next level. And then we check in next week and we see who has or hasn't completed that. And there's no shame if you haven't. Mm. Um, it's just to continue keeping you kind of thinking about how you can improve your business. And so you work with your mentor on that. I mean, my mentor will still send me emails. He's on my mailing list <laughs> and he'll send me emails and be like, oh, this is great. Or next time consider, um, and some of my small group members, I mean, we're very close. We talk to each other frequently. Um, yeah. I got a Christmas gift from one of my friends in there. And um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about lessons and what we've learned or kind of get feedback from each other. And so there's just that new constant communication. And how, how have you continued keeping up with these things? What are you doing now? Um, kind of questions that we ask each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what did I want to finish it with? Ah, I remember. It was a little challenge. Basically, if someone asked you, um, Lauren, you know, what would be the one reason that you uh, would say, wh why I need to sign up um, and, uh, and enroll for this bootcamp? What would be that one reason, one point? It, it could be any of the points we just discussed or, or something else. What would be that one point, you'd say? Yeah, I think it would be that the investment into this program is completely returned to you um, tenfold. I mean, where the, the questions you start, start asking yourself after you go through this program completely change and continue boosting your business. Um, that it's just the investment, the return, it's completely worth it. Nice. Actually, actually I, I, I like that you ended up with... Uh... But yeah, with uh, within the with word investment because I can't remember who whose quote was it, but it went something along the lines that uh, you know education and and self growth self development is the best place where you can invest. You know, and those who have made something big and successful know that in in order to earn you have to spend and and you have to invest, which you can agree with, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Every every cent I spent on this course has been completely returned. Um, I know I mentioned to the, this to you before, but before the course I couldn't afford this course. I mean, I paid for it completely on credit. And afterwards, I mean, I 
it's just completely different. My situation has totally changed. I feel hope for my business. Um, I, I, I think that this 10K bootcamp has made all the difference. Nice one, Lauren. Nice one. I really hope um, your business will just keep on growing. Now, I actually have also good news for you who is listening to this podcast. You also can transform your business through the same um, 10K bootcamp that um, Lauren used to transform her business. Because this year, Brent from YouGurus is actually opening up his first ever 2015 classes for this bootcamp. And it's happening this week. But what's even more exciting is that he is offering 90 minute free live stream 10k summit event. And that's an event where you can learn the secrets web professionals are using to sell higher value projects worth over $10,000 to transform their business and life. Uh, basically, there will be Bren himself as well as three mentors and three successful graduates from his past. 10k uh, programs and um, people who have described this this um, boot camp is really that they, they use such words as uh, life-changing uh, a, a must for any web design professional and and the future of online education so you can check it all out yourself and like I said the 10k summit is for free 90 minutes and it's live stream so to access the summit all you got to do is um, visit 10k dot first web designer Dot com. That's 10 as a number, K, letter K, firstwebdesigner.com. And also you, Lauren, yourself uh, deserve a little plug on our show. So uh, feel free to uh, tell our listeners, our audience, again, uh, what you do and exactly where they can find you. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Lauren Gray and I work with food bloggers and I absolutely love it. So please visit me at oncecoupled.com. Nice one. Thanks a lot for uh, being with us today and um, sharing your success story. And thanks a lot, guys, for listening to our today's success story. I can't wait to hear your own success story. Thanks a lot. And I will...